All right, here we are with a very super living legend. Wow, see? Live television. You are a living legend. You even made that happen. That was probably one of your past friends that had to do that. One of those angels that are watching over right now. You said the uh, the man in the moon um, anniversary of the day. Yeah. I, I remember where I was. I was there. Well, you, I was on the moon. Yeah. But I was there. Where I, were you? I was alive then. I was working in a restaurant, a French restaurant upstate New York. I was a dishwasher as a little kid, and and we all went upstairs and watched them. Ah. Uh, so do you believe he landed on the moon and walked? Yeah. Think? Sure. You have to believe in those I things. Know. I know. I know. Mean, I agree. You, you, you gotta believe in those things. And no other countries made it to the moon. But we're the Americans. <laughs> you don't think China has gotten this? You know, See, he's a, he's a young oh, person. Okay. That, uh, well, we like our cell phones, right? Well, yeah. Cell phones yeah. like TV, right? To the moon. We, everybody else gets to space, but nobody else goes to the moon. That's not efficient. Interesting. So this is Richie Stotts. Richie Stotts, it is such an honor to have you on Ruin Who. I, you, you know, I met you a long, 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 long time ago at the Ritz. And... It, like two times, once downtown at the Ritz, once uptown, and you were always the nicest person to me. You were always hanging out with Joey, and you, you were like the two tall giants walking around together, and um, you always just told me really nice things. And then when I just re-met you at Joey's birthday party, I felt like the luckiest person to like run yeah. into you again. I'm telling you, I swear to God. So I have things that people have actually asked me to ask you. Okay. Because you okay. are a superstar. Well, you have a lot of fans. You were in the Plasmatics. Yeah. And I just remember the first time I ever saw the Plasmatics was you were on the Tom Snyder show. Do you remember that night? It was, we Can did, you tell me about that night? We did two Tom Snyder shows. Uh, we, um, we did two Tom Snyder shows. Tom Snyder was, uh, uh, for people that don't know. Was I a, remember that. It was a lot. That was my first Plasmatic experience. Yeah, it, it was live, and it was up in the NBC studios, and Tom Snyder was... Uh, um, you know, we had a, 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 a nighttime show. And one of the things that was funny that I remember, I remember doing the show around 6 o'clock, and it was like, we're tired, and I went home and I went to sleep. And I remember like just waking up at around 11.30 and it just came on. So, I mean, that, what I'm saying is that then I didn't realize the impact of playing live on TV. Um, but uh, we did two shows. One where we blew a car Yeah, off, that's the one I saw. And I it, saw that. It, 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 they were all mad about the car because the, the car blew up and the, the um, I don't know the roof or something went into the went into the ceiling and then there was an, <laughs> then there was another one. This is like um, for all you guitar players out there, musicians, you, you gotta keep this is like you gotta do the show. I was um, playing, I was all excited, and I, I had my manager and he said, "Rich, you just gotta go for it." Meaning, you know, do what you usually do during regular shows. So I just had this giant core, we didn't have a lot of then, and I ran up into the audience, and I was running back and forth on the, um, in the audience, running back and forth on the, um, the little things you put your armrest, and then I fell into this old guy. It was all on TV, but my guitar came unplugged. So, um, but I still got up there and pretended I was playing. <laughs> so what I mean, you gotta keep going, you know, even if it, you, the car, the car breaks and stuff like that. So, but I loved doing that. I was a young kid, you know? It was all like, wow, TV and stuff, you know? Yeah. And were you were known for running into the audience at gigs and... He was yeah. like one of the original... You were known for having a mohawk. Like, right. you were famous for that. Yeah. Like, did you copy someone or did you invent it? Like, did people copy you? Well, I was, um... I was watching, um... This was around 1976 or 77. I was watching, um... What's the show um, with Robert De Niro on um, Taxi Driver? Taxi Driver. And I was like, oh my God. You have to understand this in the context of the band I was in with the, was the Plasmatics. And when the band was created, um, we had this lead singer and she was starting to take her top off on stage. And I was like, we had a Japanese bass player who had a shaved head. And I kind of was like this, kind of had a shag haircut looking like David Bowie. And I was, you know, I was like a little kid, you know? I was like, man, I gotta get in on this, you know? And so, like, I was watching TV and I saw, like, um, a taxi driver, and I was like, I called my manager up, I said, look, I gotta, I, I gotta do this, man, because everybody's gonna be do doing this tomorrow. So I shaved my head with a mohawk, and nobody else didn't, 
it was a while before Tina started yeah. doing that, like about 20 years later, but... <laughs> Well, there was a there was a wave at that time, but it's, it's like pop now. And then you know, then one thing led to another. Like the Mohawk wasn't good enough. I put then I dyed my hair blue, and, and then I then I and then I said, well, gee, you know, like the dolls sort of did drag, and I said, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Like, and I, I think I started that movie with the nurse and. Um, was it Angie Woodward or something movie? Yeah. The nurse. And Angie I, Dickinson, yeah. police and I, woman. And I started like dressing like like a nurse, but not like a drag, but like a crazy man, you know. And yeah, you did wear the nurse outfit. I wore the nurse outfit, so it all just kept. Once you once you get the hang, once you get the idea, then it's then, then they just keep coming. Yeah. Do you remember like your favorite outfit or like you know like? The nurse was probably one of the best. Yeah. Where would you get that nurse outfit? Um, you can get a nurse outfit in like a uniform store. So that's where you. Yeah. So you wore like a, a real legit uniform yeah, yeah, nurse yeah. outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the nurse, and then then there was a tutu outfit that I had, and then I combined the tutu with the nurse. You know. <laughs> right. And then I, the, my my one of my favorite one was I could never do this now. I was really scared. And why not? Um, because I'm, you know I was a little skinny kid, uh -huh. but I I had the Playboy outfit, and it was really creative. I just took some kind of um. I took a leotard, cut the tops off, and I went to the. It was. A, it used to be a, a store right down here on Broadway with costumes. And I got this thing and I made. And I took a white shirt, white shirt, and I cut it off. And I had a lot of fun. It was fun. Yeah. So what are you doing today? Um, in what in my way? In creativity way. Um. In any way you want to say. Well, I'm, What's Kill City Choppers? Is this, that? Oh, this is a, a friend of mine. Um, a band. Uh, a band. Like I, you know, I said, what am I going to wear today? Um, and I said, well, i got to kind of look a little rock and roll. But I went up, my friend, this is, he has a, a motorcycle shop out in L.A. His name is Stay. Actually, he moved. Hello, Stay, Stay if you're out there. I think he's up in Seattle. But um, he had a shop, Kill City um, Choppers, and I went out there to visit him. I like that. It's a nice show. Yeah. But what am I doing today? Um, I got married um, a couple of years ago. And prior to that, um, well, Carla, well, Carla Lothar, that's L-O-T-H-E-R, because I'm giving a plug here. Um, Carla Lothar um, and I have written some songs together. She, she uh, has a, um, she uh, records on a label called Chesky Records, and we've done some recording. Nice. And, and we've, we've done some stuff. Um, Another thing that um, I've done is that, this is a bit of a long story, um, about 10 years ago, I was with my friend Omid, who's out there too somewhere, and um, we were looking through a box. He said, Rich, you gotta put some of your stuff out. You know, like, what do you got? So we were looking through these boxes, this is stuff, and I found this tape, and uh, it was uh, um, you know, the tape, the song I wrote with Joey Ramon. Now, the original tape, um, it was um, recorded, it was helped, a friend of mine helped me record it, um, actually it was Tommy Hilfiger's brother, Andy and Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy and Billy, and I played with a band with them, and blah, blah, blah. So, ah. I got the, the, the original recording, it was a cassette tape, and uh, I was just like recorded on a floss pack cassette, and I called um, Mickey, which is Joey Ramon's brother, yeah. and I said, look, I got this cassette, maybe we can do something with it. And so we worked on it for a while. We extracted the vocals and put it on a, a you know, uh, because it was just done on a Floss Tech machine with a drum machine. So we took his vocals and then rebuilt the track. And we've, we've completed that. Oh, that's so cool. And so, and then during that time, they found some other old Joey songs and blah, blah, blah. Right. And so they're, they're looking to put this all out, either individually or an album. And um, it's a really good song. The song is called uh, Rock and Roll is the Answer. Is it out anywhere yet? That no, song no, is a single? No, no, no. But it's complete. It's complete, and it's really a good. It's a great. Did song. you sing it at Joey's party that night? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard that. It's kind of a little bit of off the off the tr a little bit different than a Ramon song. It's a little bit like a, you know, an '80s a rock song, like a ACDC kind of groove. Well, you and Joey had chemistry. You were like really good friends. Yeah, I mean, um, after after the, the my. The plasmatic. I, I kind of knew the Ramones a little bit here and there. Um, actually, well, that's another story. But um, I became really good friends with Joey probably around '84 and '85, and we hung out. And you know, he was a great guy. Um, he gave me. I used to have this pickup truck, and he gave me these air horns for a pickup. 
Mm. So, um, and he gave me a piranha from South America and a switchblade <laughs> from Holland. <laughs> I have a whole like I have a whole shelf of all my presents Joey Mummy gave me. But he was but that's the type of person he was for yeah. other people. He was kinda of like the godfather of punk. Yeah, that's a good What's way What's your to... plan for the record? Are you gonna put it out and that's, sell it or? that's I'm leaving that up to like the, pa the powers to be, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm satisfied with I'm satisfied yeah. with the so we're going to take a quick break and then come back and talk a little more. And if you want to share a skeleton from your closet, I got a skeleton. yay! We'll be right back. Yeah, that's where dreams 